The term gunfighter is used heavily in discussions of the Wild West. This is, despite the word being a general phrase, meant to describe a number of professions and lifestyles on the western frontier. It could reference ranchers and cowboy archetypes you see in artistic representations of the time period. It could also relate to polar opposites. Both lawmen and outlaws alike were forms of gunfighters, always armed and ready for a show, either for the greater good or the selfish bad. Even folks stuck with the labels of conman and gambler were referred to generally as gunfighters, people who could defend themselves when their vice of choice led them into murkier waters. Of all the professions spanning all the industries, the most fascinating subgroup of gunfighters were the bounty hunters, men dispatched by both the government and powerful entities who venture out across the land in search of a man or woman who owes someone else money or other goods. While bounty hunting wasn't as popular a career as many Hollywood films would suggest, it was a way for some of the most experienced and isolated gunfighters to make a living while using their talents to the best of their abilities. To cover these intriguing and incendiary figures of Western frontier lore, here's the next video in our series of both famous and infamous bounty hunters and lawmen, continuing with the longest living lawmen of the American West, Marshall and bounty hunter Hamilton Bell. Long before he quelled the streets of Dodge City, Kansas, Hamilton Butler Bell was born 1,000 miles away in Pleasant Valley, Maryland, on July 31, 1853. He was the third child of Louis Bell and his wife, Ruth Butler Bell, both lifetime residents of Little America. Hamilton, later nicknamed Ham for short, had an older sister, Mary, and an older brother, Henry Kay. All three of the Bell children were met with tragedy early on in life, when their mother passed away unexpectedly before Ham could turn just one year old. Left to raise three young kids, including a month's old infant, Lewis Bell did his best to capitalize on their little family farm in Washington County, Maryland. For nine years, he made a modest living to keep food on the table for Henry, Mary, and Hamilton. Unfortunately though, he never made it a decade when in February of 1862, Lewis died at the age of 43. At the age of just nine years old, Hamilton Bell had tragically lost both parents and found himself orphaned along with his older siblings. There wasn't much of an inheritance left behind, and neither Henry nor Mary were in a position to take care of their younger brother. Instead, Bell was sent off to Hagerstown, Maryland to live with one of his uncles. His uncle was a working man, but still didn't have much by way of an expendable income. He couldn't afford to pay for any type of schooling for young Hamilton out on the East Coast, and as such, Bell struggled to keep up academically with his peers. Knowing higher education wasn't in the cards he was dealt, he bid farewell to his siblings and uncle and sought greener pastures elsewhere. His first stop took him all the way to Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. At the age of just 14, Bell found work at a local jewelry store. The owner was intrigued by Bell's honesty and humble beginnings, as well as his peculiar people skills. The young boy made it no secret he had the smarts to connect with folk whether they were his age or not, a skill he'd wield much later in his frontier life. For the time being though, he was content getting the ground beneath his feet. For five years, Ham Bell sold gold chains and sterling silver and diamond pieces from the Waynesboro jewelry outfit before taking off further westward. His next rendezvous placed the future lawman in Lawrence, Kansas. And by June of 1872, he had built up a bit of personal wealth working as a freelance horologist. From the Quaker State and all along the Ohio River Valley, from St. Louis to the edges of America's heartland, Bill fixed and cleaned clocks till he could move to Great Bend in July. For a couple of years, the 19-year-old jack-of-all-trades dipped his toes in various waters. At one point, he ran his own ice delivery business as refrigeration was being industrialized on the frontier. He also spent time as a hack driver, working in a boxcar 
with an anonymous Santa Fe agent. It was around this time, Bill gained vital skills as a gunfighter, learning to hunt buffalo with big game frontiersmen passing through the Sunflower State. His stalwart demeanor impressed the local lawmen so much so, he was made a Great Bend deputy at the age of just 19. One of the US Marshals there, a man called James Gainsford, appointed him assistant marshal as a result, and the tenure likely led him to his first big success in Dodge City. Two years after landing in Kansas, Bell took his talents to the cowboy capital of the world. He had caught wind of a gig posting for the Santa Fe Railroad, who were in need of haulers to transport cross ties to the railway workers of Western Kansas and into Colorado. For a few months, Bell went back and forth between the high plains of Colorado and the rolling hillsides of Kansas. By the time 1875 rolled around, he had another itch to scratch. He longed for the days of operating his own business and raised the funds to open a livery outfit. He enjoyed the transportation industry and for the next 24 years, would peddle his patrons around town. Dodge City was in need of much more than another livery man, however. Later dubbed the Wicked Little City, the Southwest Kansas settlement was rife with scum and villainy. It was a magnet for outlaws ever since the surrounding towns were barred from the cattle trade, and all the cowboys and cattlemen flocked to Dodge City seemingly at once. While it was still a year before the mass influx of travelers and ranch folk reached the city limits, Bell's expertise and maturity were needed by the few lawmen who had settled down in Dodge. The older hardened keepers of the peace heard stories of Bell's exploits in Great Bend. The young burgeoning deputy often told tales of his short time serving central Kansas. One such legend goes that Bell had chased down a petty thief or cattle rustler until he had him pinned in a dead end. The man apparently dared Bell to shoot, but all the boy could say was, a kid will shoot quicker than a man, despite being nothing more than a teenager himself. The mythology surrounding Ham Bell was enough to convince the old guard to deputize the young man. He hadn't been in Dodge City for more than a calendar year when he was officially made deputy sheriff, a position he held for a third of a decade. As more and more ruffians made their way into Southwest Kansas, the value of Bell's combined expertise and affinity for peacekeeping demanded a promotion. He was given the title of Deputy U.S. Marshal at just 27 years old and began his dozen year tenure as the leading lawman of Dodge City. While Hamilton Bell's name doesn't show up in the documents and old records detailing the heyday of Dodge City's wickedness, rest assured, he was an active gunfighter during the town's struggle with outlaws. He was known to ride with Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and Bad Masterson, legendary lawmen and icons of the frontier in their own right. Reports indicated Bell aided the mysteriously titled Earp Gang, thought to be the posse of gunfighters led by Wyatt and his brother Virgil. While Hamilton Bell played no part in the notorious gunfight at the OK Corral, he is thought to have billowed the incendiary tempers that were inflamed during the Dodge City War of 1883. In what amounted to a bloodless head-to-head -head conflict between Mayor Lawrence E. Degger and saloon owner Luke Short, it said Bell acted as a voice of reason alongside Arp and Masterson to ensure no life was needlessly lost. Of course, Bell isn't included in most oral and written traditions of the Dodge City War, nor is he included in the now famous photograph. But some accounts do place him as an advisor to the Dodge City Peace Commission. In 1888, Bell was elected sheriff of Ford County, of which Dodge City was the county seat. He still had four years left of service to the U.S. Marshals, but had recently won over the hearts and minds of worried citizens in the most wickedest city in all the states. The now 35-year-old Bell knew his only route to rid the county of the leftover ruffians was to run on a democratic platform, a strategy that saw him elected sheriff over the next 12 consecutive years, despite living amongst a majority Republican demographic. As the head honcho of Ford County, Bell got right to work, tracking down the elusive outlaws 
who had somehow evaded capture over the last two decades. Cattle rustlers, bank thieves, and the West's newest form of criminal enterprise, train robbers, had used Dodge City and its surrounding outposts to hide from less inspired lawmen. Sheriff Hamilton Bell surely was of no such kind and used his newfound powers of justice to rein them in. The western regions of Kansas were filled to the brim with packs of declining bandits. And even though Bell never once claimed a life for his own, they were terrified of coming face to face with the marshal turned sheriff, notches on his belt or not. While Hamilton Bell was never considered an official bounty hunter in name or title, it was certainly considered a trade. Morning after morning, he'd awake with news of a fresh robbery or murder and waste no time in rounding up his most trusted men to ride through the plain in search of suspects. He wasn't paid per contract and given the fame and glory some gunfighters of the Old West were aspiring for. Bell simply wanted to serve his county and bring justice to a land toiling away from the lack of it. By 1910, the final year of Hamilton Bell's service as the sheriff of Ford County, Dodge City was consumed by wicked characters no more. At least, not in the volume it had been in the latter half of the 19th century. He ended his term as sheriff with a crystal clear record to boot, having never been accused of an unjust arrest or even slugging a man with his own gun. It said in over 30 years of being a lawman, he never shot a single soul and yet still came away with the most decorated record in all of frontier law enforcement. It was popular in those days for a desperate lawman to bend the rules of interrogation, to bring men in hot or cold, regardless of what the wanted poster said. Not old Ham Bell, though. He was respected through and through, and respected so much so, he was made chief of police in Dodge City in 1910. Over the next 37 years, Bell lived a highly successful life in that once reckless town turned haven of the frontier. He owned a saloon, a furniture store, and a mortuary business. He helped develop the first ever woman's restroom found on the Santa Fe Trail and brought the automobile industry to Dodge City. He operated the first ever car dealership in Southwest Kansas, specializing in Hudson's and Chalmers. On top of that, he helped bring motorized ambulances into Dodge City, aiding healthcare efforts as the West developed into the modern age. It seemed Hamilton Bell could save lives no matter where he stepped foot, leaving behind a legacy fit for very, very few men. After four terms in Dodge City politics, two as Ford County Commissioner and another two as the mayor of Dodge City, Hamilton Bell retreated to his final venture. The former lawman opened up a small pet shop where he sold his favorite birds, the canary, their yellowish green plumage shimmering under the warm Kansas sun, perched on his shoulder and delivering their harmony as old Bell rode into the sunset. He died at age 93 on April 4th, 1947 in Dodge City. He had been preceded in death by his wife of 26 years Josephine B. Bell, who had passed in 1900. The details of one Hamilton B. Bell may be few and far between, especially concerning his decorated career, catching thieves, and cleaning the streets of the Wild West's most infamous hub of sin. However, what is for sure is Bell lived to be the oldest living lawman of the American frontier, and a fearsome icon of the American dream. He lived a full, if not fabled life, one that will forever uphold his name in the lore and legends of the Old West.